Hello and welcome back to chapter 22. Uh, this chapter is about cash flow forecasting and working capital. Uh, in this chapter, we uh, will explain uh, many points. Uh, first, we'll talk about uh, the importance of cash, why it's important for the business to do a cash flow forecast and uh, cash flow management. Uh, we'll uh, do some calculations and uh, draw a simple cash flow forecast to understand how to uh, to uh, work on uh, forecasting and what are the items of cash flow forecast. Uh, we'll talk about the solutions. Uh, if the business has a cash flow problem, what uh, are the, the solutions to this problem? And also we'll talk about working capital. That's a new terminology, of course, in this chapter. So many new words probably uh, in this uh, chapter as well like chapter 21 so uh, to understand why cash is important simply you have to understand uh, without cash what will happen so of course without cash the business probably will fail to do many things it will fail to pay wages and salaries to employees I'll fail to pay suppliers for the goods and services I buy from uh, I'll fail to pay my expenses and here I have many expenses starting with rent, heating, lightning, maintenance, many things, of course. And some businesses might be forced to liquefy because, uh, 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 or they stop their operations because simply they cannot afford staying without cash. Once you uh, cannot uh, pay suppliers or you're not able to pay your employees, the problem will become bigger and bigger. And of course, you have to sell up everything you own and pay your debts. So. Of course, we need to make to have a cash flow management because without managing the cash, the business probably will fail. Cash is an important uh, item in the business and should be managed uh, very well by the business so that the business knows that there is uh, uh, always enough cash to uh, cover uh, the business expenses and business costs. So when I talk about uh, cash flow, of the business I talk about two things the cash inflow and cash outflow so when I say cash inflow it's the uh, money coming in to the business and of course cash inflow has many sources so when I sell goods for cash when my debtors pay me uh, and they'll explain debtors now when I borrow money from the bank when I sell assets I get cash when investors invest in the business also I get cash uh, the first two, when I sell goods for cash, that means you sell goods and you receive cash immediately. But sometimes we sell goods on credit. That means we sell goods now and we receive money later. So, of course, someone owes me money. The customers who owe me money for the goods they bought on credit are called debtors. So, my debtors or my trade receivables, this is the word that you will see in the exam, debtors or trade receivables mean the customers who buy goods from the business and will pay later. However, cash outflows, of course the opposite, is the money going out of the business and usually I pay for the goods I buy, uh, purch purchasing the goods for cash, paying wages and salaries for cash, purchasing fixed assets, machines, equipment and all these things, repaying the loans that I already took from the bank and paying creditors. And one more time, creditors or trade payables are my suppliers who I buy goods from and I'll pay them later. So see, sometimes I, I, I use cash immediately and I buy uh, or I uh, uh, sometimes use uh, receive cash immediately from customers. And of course, sometimes I buy on credit or I sell on credit. So you have to understand that I'll have creditors uh, every time I buy goods on credit from suppliers and I pay them later. This is called a uh, cash flow cycle. Uh, when, when I talk about cash, of course, cash uh, has a cycle. I mean, it, it's uh, generated uh, when the business uh, produce the goods, sell the goods, and then the business will receive cash from customers. After receiving cash, the business probably will pay uh, wages and buy materials and then the production will happen in this cycle of course uh, it's, co it's continuous so if there is any problem in one of the parts of this cycle 
uh, there will be a shortage in cash. So let's take uh, an example. So if this cash flow cycle takes a long time to happen, that means the business will be in need for cash. Let's uh, assume that uh, the business sold goods and the customers uh, take a long time to pay back the money to the business. So now I'll have a shortage in cash. So I cannot buy materials, I cannot pay wages, I cannot produce, then I cannot sell. So see, if there is any problem here, the, the cycle will take a long time to happen. And of course, this means that I will need more cash. So just imagine like if this is long, if, you, if the cash takes a long time to come to the business, to enter the business, to flows uh, to the business, of course, uh, uh, I'll need more cash. So cash flow cycle is uh, important it should be continuous and every time i uh, uh, look at the cash flow cycle i have to understand that cash is always needed okay cash flows are not the same uh, as profit many people confuse the word profit with cash flows and of course they are not the same at all so first when i say cash flow i know that it's cash inflow minus cash outflow it's the money coming in into the business minus the money going out of the business. However, profit is something else. Profit is simply the difference between the sales revenue of the business and the cost of goods sold. So now there is an example I can, I can use to illustrate. So remember, profitable businesses might run out of cash. Why? Because simply the profit is not like cash. Using this example will illustrate. So let's take this example here. Using this example, we have a business. Uh, they have transactions on, uh, over the month of June. Uh, goods sold to customers $40,000. Cost of goods sold $15,000. They said simply that uh, $40,000 received uh, from customers 50% cash and 50% on one month credit. So they will pay me uh, in July. And uh, the goods that uh, I bought already, I paid for them in cash. Then I ask you to calculate the profit of June. So I know that the rule of profit will be sales revenue, the money you made out of sales, which is $40,000 minus $15,000, which is the cost of goods sold. So this will give me $25,000. I didn't say that I received this money. I said that when I sold goods, $40,000, I received 50%, right? So now the cash inflow of the business is not $40,000. It's simply $20,000, right? The money that you received in cash. And the cash outflow of the business is $15,000 because I paid $15,000 in cash. So now if I ask you, how much did you make profit? You say $25,000. I ask you, did you receive all the money? You say no. The sales that we did, $40,000, we received half of them. So now if I look at the cash figure, I see it $5,000. So I have now in my pocket $5,000. I can see them, I can touch them. However, the profit that I made out of transactions in June was $25,000. So see, I, I might be a profitable business, but I might run out of cash. And this is what we call in business insolvency. So yes, you might see businesses making a lot of profits, but they are not collecting this money or they're not generating this profit into cash. Why? Because customers are taking a long time to pay. Or maybe I'm using this cash, the cash that I have, to buy a lot of assets, so I run out of cash. Or I'm expanding quickly, I am, I am buying uh, more stock and we call this over trading so all these reasons will cause the cash to uh, uh, simply decrease uh, although i am a profitable business cash flow forecast the important thing and the questions uh, uh, in the exam usually will talk about cash flow forecast and uh, they will ask you to draw a table not draw a table to fill a table or find missing figures Cash flow forecast is just an estimate of the cash inflows and outflows of a business over a period of time. So I said cash flow is important and of course I should be able to estimate uh, the need of cash 
uh, in, uh, in the future. So usually ba on monthly basis, I start to uh, estimate the cash in and cash out. So let's say we are in February now, I start to estimate or I should have an estimate of March, April, May, June, the cash in and cash out of these uh, months, of course. So now, if I want to, uh, for example, take a bank loan, if I feel like I need cash in June, I start arranging a bank loan or a finance starting from now. So that's why cash flow management and forecasting is important. Of course, cash flow or cash inflow should be always more than the cash outflow. This is, of course, uh, clear. Cash in should be always more than the can cash outflows. So if you look at this figure now, or at this table, you can see that first I have the cash inflows. There will be uh, the, ma the money coming in. And I have cash outflows, money going out. The difference between the two, cash in minus cash cash out will be cash flow so here let's take january cash inflows 10 cash outflows 7 the net cash flow is 3. the opening balance is the amount of money that i started january with so i started january with what with five so now the closing balance of january will be eight so if now the closing balance of january is eight then the opening balance of february will be eight of course so look at the opening balance of February, it's 8. So if you take February as well, cash inflows 15, cash outflows 27. You see it's minus 12, negative 12 in February. I have a cash flow problem in February. Cash, out, uh, cash outflows are more than the cash inflows. So I end up with a closing balance of negative 4. So I see that February has a negative balance, so maybe I should find a problem uh, and find the solution of this problem. So maybe it will be uh, a bank loan, maybe it will be uh, postponing some uh, uh, payments, and of course many other solutions. Cash flow management will allow me to assess all these things. So here, as you can see, that uh, February has a negative balance, so maybe delaying some payments will keep uh, the cash flow positive. So uh, I'll estimate and I'll see the solutions, of course, and uh, cash flow forecast will help me to find the solutions and see what can I do to just avoid uh, uh, negative uh, cash flow. So if the business cannot delay some payments, it has two options. Maybe I get a source of finance, maybe I take a loan, maybe higher purchase, many ways. You already studied this in chapter 21, right? Uh, maybe I can uh, take an overdraft from the bank. Uh, all the solutions related to finance, overdraft or loan or higher purchase, of course they will cost the business. Of course I know there is interest to pay, but still they might help me to avoid negative cash flows and the negative consequences of having negative cash flows. If I look at the cash flow statement and I ask myself how to overcome cash flow problems, I have many solutions. Easy way to understand it, just know that I have two basic things to know. I should keep cash inflows high and I should reduce cash outflows. So think about it, to have a positive balance of cash flows, cash inflows should be more than cash outflows, right? So how to do this? If I ask trade receivables, customers, to pay me quickly for the goods they took, uh, maybe I give them discounts just to encourage them, they will pay me quickly, so I increase my cash inflow, right? But there is a disadvantage here, like uh, uh, competitors or customers might go to competitors to buy goods, so this might be a disadvantage of using this way. I might ask suppliers to pay them later, so see, I delay payment to suppliers but also it has a negative impact where suppliers might refuse to give me goods or of course I lose the discount that is provided by suppliers. Maybe I delay some purchases. I'm going to buy uh, machines, equipments now, maybe I can delay them, but also it has a disadvantage. Maybe I need this machine now because it's needed for the efficiency of the business, the efficiency of my production. So delaying it might affect my production and efficiency. Right? Maybe I take bank loans, but still I have to pay interest. So nothing is for free, of course. Solving the problem will uh, uh, has some 
uh, has its advantages and of course it has its advantages. It will help you to avoid a cash flow problem, but still the business will find a suitable way to solve uh, its uh, cash flow problem. And of course the best thing is to avoid the cash flow problem. The last point in this chapter is talking about working capital. This concept is important in the business. Working capital is called the lifeblood of the business. Why do we call it the life of blood? Because it's simply the money needed by the business to pay short-term debts. So uh, it's like the fuel, it's like the blood. Uh, the money that you need to pay day-to-day -day business expenses, wages, buying materials, inventory, all these things is called working capital. So when I look at your liquidity, at the business ability to pay its short-term debts, I look at the working capital and I see is the business uh, 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 has enough working capital? Can the business pay its uh, liabilities? So if the answer is yes, that means I have working capital. And the working capital, later on you will see it in the balance sheet, has this rule, which is current asset minus current liabilities. For now, you should understand that working capital is the lifeblood of the business. It's uh, the money needed by the business to pay short-term debts. Uh, this measures the liquidity of the business. So working capital is an important sign that the business is doing well in terms of liquidity. And here, remember, the word liquidity means the ability of the business to pay its short-term debts. So working capital may be held in different forms. Of course, the cash needed to pay today business expenses. Uh, debtors, the, the money with, the, with your customers, of course, it's your money. And when you have uh, enough inventories, of course, uh, to produce or otherwise the production will stop. So uh, working capital will be available uh, by using the rule, as I said, current asset minus current liabilities. Cash, debtors, and inventories are part of your current assets. And in business, we assume that current assets should be able to cover current liabilities. So here I'm saying the cash that I have the stock that I have that and I sell, the money with my debtors should cover my current liabilities. So if the answer is yes, I mean current assets are more than current liabilities, that means I have a working capital. And I can do this. I am good in terms of liquidity. If no, I have a serious problem. Remember, working capital is a lifeblood of the business, so it's a must to, uh, to be there to pay for material wages and all these things. Okay, so that's all for uh, this chapter. In the exam, the questions are always repeated. In this chapter, you have to know how to overcome cash flow problem. You have to know how to find missing figures in the cash flow forecast. It's very important. Of course, you should understand the difference between a profit and cash flow. Uh, uh, but the most important uh, are the first two questions I've mentioned because usually uh, in, in uh, past papers, I saw questions related to these uh, uh, topics asking about uh, cash flow forecast uh, and asking about overcoming the cash flow problem. Okay, so that's all for chapter 22. Uh, next chapter will uh, will be income statement. Uh, 23, 24, 25 will be somehow linked together. Uh, I'll do some exercises uh, to show you how to uh, study these chapters. They are really easy and uh, uh, you don't need to study everything related to them. I'll tell you exactly how to study them, so see you in chapter 23.